What is up, you guys? It is Maddie here, and right now I am bringing you another episode of Elder Scrolls Online Roundup. Basically, anytime you see a developer question of the week, you can expect to see this uh, another episode of this series sometime in the future, because that's kind of when I renew my topics and everything. So I got three pretty interesting topics for you guys, and I'm going to start off the one that I saw most in the comments. And uh, if you don't know, and you're new to this series, what you do is just post a crap ton of comments on... Uh, you know, questions you have about the Elder Scrolls Online, speculations, and basically I'll pick those topics um, based off your discussions in the comments. Like, I think I got like 70-something comments last video, so if you guys could do that again, that was awesome. It was nice seeing some feedback, it was nice seeing a lot of chatter, and it really made my life a lot easier, you know, picking what to discuss with about the Elder Scrolls Online. So if you guys could really do that again and start chatting it up, uh, that'd be awesome. But anyways, the most common discussion in the comments was whether it's going to be subscription based or it's going to be like a free to play game. Like, how are we going to like pay for this game? You know, uh, is it going to be free to play? Are we going to have to pay monthly? Now, personally, I think it's going to be a monthly subscription. But my question really is how much do you think that, you know, the, the only uh, two games that I had to pay for uh, subscriptions were... Uh, RuneScape and uh, what was the other game? World of Warcraft. And I'm not a huge MMO player, so uh, you know this didn't really uh, affect me. Um, I really didn't think much of it. I remember when I, I may, things may have changed. I remember though that when I played uh, RuneScape, it was about seven bucks a month. But RuneScape's a pretty, uh, it's a big game, but you know its graphics are shit. It's browser based. You know it, it's a lot of things that really limit it. Um, <clears throat> you know, if it was released as a full retail game, maybe they could make some vast improvements. Um, now for the, uh, World of Warcraft, I think I, I think I paid like, I'm, I may be off, but I think it was like 20 a month, maybe 15, something along those lines. It was something kind of expensive because I remember having to discuss it with my parents as a kid when I first got it on whether or not I would be able to play it. And so, you know, I'm thinking with the, uh, the way Elder Scrolls Online is lining up, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, I won't mind paying whatever the price is, because um, I'm going to play this no matter what. I'm just kind of curious as to how much. I'm going to go with around 15, maybe 10, maybe. Um, you know, more so I'm kind of keeping it low. Maybe that's considered low, considering I don't know much about the MMO uh, subscription-based pricing. I know that it's definitely going to be, you have to pay. I mean, if they made this game, they, you know hyped it up so much only to give it to us for free. Basically, we just pay for a retail copy, which would be awesome. But I doubt that's going to happen. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be subscription based around that price range. Um, now, if it is just, you know, you buy to play where you just buy the retail copy at 60 bucks and that's it, that would be awesome. I'd love that. Um, that would make me very happy. It would save some extra money in my pocket throughout the year. It would really add up because I'm trying to save up for a car right now. So, you know, any money I can really save, I've been saving. So, you know. That's basically my thoughts on the subscription and free to play section. Now let's go. Uh, sorry. Now let's go ahead and hop into the developer question and leak. Let's take a look at that right now. Hi, my name is Cody Wright, and I'm a world builder on Zenimax Online Studios, The Elder Scrolls Online. Much of Tamriel is untamed, and many dangerous creatures roam the land. What creature from the Elder Scrolls would you be most afraid to encounter in the wild? See, now this is a great question, because, you know, I, I'm trying to think of this from a beginner standpoint, because right now, as a level 50 in Skyrim, I, uh, you know, nothing really poses a huge threat. I mean, there are things that can kill me, but uh, nothing really poses a huge threat. Um, you know... If I had to really pick one, though, I, I definitely pick the uh, the Frost Troll because I got a little story with this one. Um, I remember when I first started off the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, I remember going to throw the world throughout the main story mode, and for some reason, you don't encounter a single thing on your way up. Maybe an ice wolf here or there. Uh, not an ice wolf. Maybe just a normal wolf, you know, on the dirt path before going up into the frosty mountains. And, you know, you're climbing up. And all of a sudden, you get attacked by this Frost Troll, and, you know, being the naive gamer you are, you're like, oh, I can handle this. So you start fighting it, and this thing knocks you the fuck out in two hits. So you're like, all right, shit. You know, so you go back, you try again, you die. You're like, all right, I got to go level up. So I go back to level up, and unfortunately, with my luck, I end up in the Labyrinthian, 
which basically, if you don't know, has about like five frost trolls in it. So I come in there, I'm like, all right, time to train, time to level up and kick some ass. And lo and behold, I get killed again. So that's definitely something that I feared throughout my lower levels and really wasn't confident enough to face it until I was, you know, level 20 and I started actually generally being able to kill it before it killed me. Um, you know, and also as a low level like that, you know, you're probably like, oh, well, if you had enough potions, you could probably kill it. Well, you know, I didn't have any potions. So definitely as a low level, I would definitely fear the frost trolls. Um, now as a higher level, I can't really pick anything because when you level up, there's really nothing that you should be able to fear, you know. There's, uh, I mean, I'm imagining in the Elder Scrolls Online, what you're going to fear most is dungeon bosses, probably. You know, at the end of your, your dungeon raids, I'm sure there will be a tough boss, and I'm sure there will be certain bosses that are extremely annoying in certain ways, and I feel that, you know, that'll be what's really annoying, not annoying, but that challenge to certain people that's going to be kind of uh, intimidating. So that's what I'm feeling that the Elder Scrolls Online is going to provide there. That's definitely my... Uh, biggest fear as a beginner, um, running into that big giant enemy that can kick my ass and I have to go level up and kind of avoid it and be a little bitch. And I don't like being a bitch in games. I like running in there and kicking some serious ass. Uh, anyways, I wanted to move on to our final topic, which is PvP. Now, I paused the recording and went on a few websites and did some research and wrote down a few bullet points here on what really stuck out to me that would make The Elder Scrolls Online a great PvP or Alliance vs. Alliance experience. And I got them right here, so I'm going to read them off to you. Not read them off to you. I'm going to read off one and then explain why. And uh, yeah, we'll go like that. So, uh, dungeon in the middle to fight over for the best place to get XP. Perhaps like a treasure in the middle, you know? Uh, you have this dungeon in the smack dab center of Cyrodiil, um, or whatever looks best mapped around the uh, on the map itself, you know? So it's not just this dungeon just sitting here in the center. And uh, basically, whoever, whatever faction takes over that dungeon will have the best place to go and get XP and level up. So if you really want to level up, if you're trying to just grind for a night, you know, it's a Friday night, you're a fat nerd like me, you're just trying to grind, and, uh, you know, you're like, all right, we need to take this place over. You get a few buddies together, you raid that place, you know, it's interesting. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was that when I was listening to the Alpha review um, of the Elder Scrolls Online, they were they were saying that, like, you could... Uh, you know, there would be players uh, actually set up in a fort, you know, in the in like Cyrodiil in the center. Um, they would have taken over a fort somehow, and you know, there will be like a farm outside supplying that fort to keep it alive. And you can take over the farm outside the fort and actually, you know, starve out the fort so that the players have to come out to you instead of you raiding the and potentially dying easy because there's not just players you know there will be guards and uh, soldiers sitting there trying to defend as well you know it, it's really interesting that we could really have that type of strategy so I feel strategy is a key point here in uh, you know making a great experience you know another thing is the race slash faction strength you need to have that like well, like I was saying that uh you know that ver that variety like uh, you know, elves can sneak behind enemy lines, and yet, like, Bretons can make magical shields or, like, boards or something. You know, dark elves could focus on destruction magic, you know, up front. And, you know, no, like, orcs are good at siege fighting, you know, like, those kind of things. Like, you know, uh, and, and when you ever, whenever you pick, uh, for me personally, whenever I pick a class for any game, I sit there for the longest time reading up on each one, not like on my phone or my computer, I'm saying like end game information, and really deciding which one really sounds like the best thing for me to play, and like I think ahead, you know, and it's really a key choice, and I feel that it would really impact even more of a choice if you sat there, you know, you had your, like, you know, your, not your solo stuff, but like your actual race bonuses, and then your PvP slash AVA bonuses right under that when they list on the bullet points what is best for, or what your race benefits are, you know. I apologize for my voice crack. My throat's a tad dry. But, you know, that that's personally to me, that really stuck out to me, you know, some race slash faction, faction strengths, you know. Um, and the last one is rich looking environments, which I totally agree with when I read this on a website. Um, definitely, without a doubt, don't make it boring. Cyrodiil is huge. Tamriel is huge. You know, you gotta have this place looking great. You don't want to be running through a boring fucking desert or just the same jungle over and over for like fucking three miles. You want to be able to see something that's a delight to see. And you know, like months down the line, people are gonna be like bored as shit of it. And you know, 
have little key points throughout the area that kind of stick out so that you kind of know where you're mapped out. Because, like I said, Cyrodiil is a huge place. No one wants to get lost in a place that's for PvPing, you know? So make a lot of key points. Um, now, I'm sure there's, like, capital cities out in Cyrodiil and whatnot, maybe. But still, nonetheless, you know, like, safe places. But, you know, like I said, make key points that you can stop throughout the way and or you can, you know, kind of map out where you are. But other than that, that's the second episode of Elder Scrolls Roundup. Um, be sure to post your comments down below again on more speculation and what you think are questions or whatnot on the Elder Scrolls Online. I will be sure to do my best to read them because I don't get a lot of comments, but last time we did this, I got a lot. And it was great to be able to read a shit ton of them. So be sure to come back hard again. And uh, other than that, stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace. All right, you guys, on the top left are my Twitter and Facebook links can be found in the description. On the top right is an interesting topical commentary inspired by one of you uh, with your comments. So be sure to post lots of comments because that's how videos like that come out. So be sure to check that one out definitely. And on the bottom right is my Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army LP with B. So be sure to check that out as well. Hope you guys enjoy. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. <laughs>